What do you do when you're trying to navigate a hostile work environment? That's exactly the situation this next caller is dealing with, and I walk him through a few steps to hopefully manage the situation a little better. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to hear me coach more live callers just like this one. Andrew, welcome to the show. How can I help you? Hi, um, I'm having some trouble at work. Okay. What's going on? So, you know, for the past, I'd say past few months, I've been working at this Japanese toy store and it's just been such a struggle. I don't really know what to do. I just started this job not even four months ago. I've been here for barely even five months and my manager and all my colleagues have been nothing but trouble to me. And what I mean by trouble is, you know, every time I'm coming in, these vibes are always good, you know, for, you know, starting off the day, doing my work as I usually do, and then come towards the end of my shift. They start not only picking on me, but it always becomes some type of altercation. And even the higher ups don't even believe me. It all started probably like a month into, you know, working this job. Um, it started with comments, you know, they commented on my background, you know, when I applied, I had to go, of course, interview with one of the hiring managers there. So I guess the hiring manager, she filled in all the other employees around me about my medical records and things that are actually private. What? Exactly. Crazy. And from that point, after she filled them in within the first month when I was working there, she just kept telling them pretty much everything. So within the first month of me working there, a lot of my other colleagues would make jokes about, you know, whether it'd be me with my epilepsy past condition, they'd be call me <laughs> Caesar salad, like making jokes like for friends and stuff like that, or just making jokes surrounded around that topic, which is, I feel like it's private info. Of course it is. So it started with that. And, you know, of course, you're going to just laugh with it because you're in an awkward situation, even though people laugh when they're uncomfortable. So that's what, what was going on. So I guess they probably thought, okay, he thinks it's funny. We can keep blowing this person. It was just out of like nervousness and I didn't really know how to be confrontational. I, I mean, I feel like that should have been the breaking point for me to kind of look for another job. But during this time period, you know, I couldn't, you know, stability is the main thing for all of us. So I couldn't just jump the ship like that. And come around my first paycheck, this is where the major red flags started coming into play. When I got my first paycheck within this first month when I started working, my boss, she didn't want to give me my check because I was wearing improper shoes, but they just added this policy literally the day I walked in and nobody told me anything. So then she's like, okay, I'll give you your check. But with the check, I want you to go buy some new shoes. And she's like, these shoes are hideous. And they're just black shoes. Like, they told me that I needed to wear brown shoes just on the day of. They could have told me any time before, and I would have went out to buy the brown shoes. And the store manager, she was also just like, yeah, and get yourself some new clothes, too. Because she's like, this is not it. So basically insinuating that my clothes were raggedy, which is kind of crazy, too. Because I wasn't supposed to work till later that day. So I came in just to pick up my check. And she told me that, which none of her business of how I dress outside of work. So that was the first major red flag. So I come in later on that night and they hired this new guy and this new guy was going to be my new manager for these days that they were scheduling me for. Nothing of it, we're cool. And then, you know, we're talking. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a better turnaround for this job for me. So come literally a day later, two days later, maybe if that, he's filled in on the whole joke of me being a joke at the job. And keep in mind, you go to work, get the work done, get your money to provide, you know, stability for yourself. That's all it is, not to make friends. It's not school. I have that mindset in my head, and they're just taking it as, like, oh, he's a loser, he's that. And throughout the time period coming up, two days after that, uh, when I got my first paycheck, it kept getting worse. You know, they started using very little slurs here and there when it came to, you know, me having a disability or me just... Well, hold on. Can I can I can I stop you for a sec? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a lot of evidence here of sort of a hostile work environment. People are making fun of you for medical issues, correct? Correct. Is this a store that is owned by a larger company or is it yes. just a one-off store? Okay. So it's owned a by a larger company. company. Have you talked to HR at the larger company? Um, Actually, yes. I've contacted HR many of times, but there's only one person in HR, which is kind of weird. That's what they told me. There's not many people in the HR department. And they take forever to respond. But when I contacted HR, their response was pretty much nothing very nonchalant. So I'm feeling like I have to really reach out and take matters into my own hands everywhere else. But I really don't know how to go about it because HR hasn't been much help either. 
I'm happy to go over some, just a couple of things that I might advise you to do. But before I get there, are you, are you looking for a new job? Because it sounds like oh, probably that would be the best. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'd probably be the best route. But um, in the meantime, I would expect that you want to set some boundaries and tell people it's not okay to continue to talk about that stuff. Have you already tried to do that or you haven't felt comfortable doing that? Well, I've actually tried to do that a numerous of times during, you know, when everything started to come about during my first month, you know, I started, hey, like, that's not cool. Or like, you know, you really set that social boundary just by your body language and just your facial expressions like, uh, and, you know, really try to change the topic. Like, I really try to give them a second chance to redeem themselves. And maybe they didn't know, maybe it's just they're how they are. But I really just try to do it in the nicest way possible. Like, hey, like, Anyways, like, you know, trying to move on from it and tell, obviously show that it's uncomfortable yeah. for me. So you're you're taking the friendly, jovial kind of approach to setting a boundary and it's not working is what you're saying. Essentially, yes. Yeah. I mean, is it time to take a different approach where you can get a little bit more stern with them? Would you feel okay saying, you know what, I've asked you nicely, I've talked to you a little bit, I got to be more serious now, please don't talk about that anymore. Can you set a boundary like that? Yeah, you know, I, like I said before, like, I'm not really the confrontational type of person. But you know, I'm definitely leaning to that point as I look into getting a new job to set that boundary to kind of be more stern about it, because I feel like that could work as well. I would take the context of being quote, unquote, confrontational, I would take that connotation out. It's not being confrontational to set a boundary. You're just setting a boundary that's healthy for you. And that's how you should take it. You should say, I am setting a boundary that's healthy for me. If I try to set the boundary with this one approach, it doesn't work. I'm going to use a different approach. But either way, I have to set some boundaries for myself to protect myself and to keep me feeling psychologically safe and like I'm not being attacked, essentially. You're not being confrontational. Forget that. You are setting a boundary that's a healthy boundary for you, and that's important. And, and if you have to be more stern to do that, then you do that. While you're doing that, I would highly recommend starting to document every instance that you feel there's some hostility coming at you. So someone says something about your medical history or they make fun of you in some way, they call you some name, you document it. You say when it happened, what the time was, you put it down in writing. This is all going to go to HR. And HR is going to have to hear about this at some point. You know, this is more serious, especially medical histories being revealed. Like, that's very serious stuff. Be as, as diligent as you can about documenting this stuff so that you have a clear record of it. HR needs to hear about this. They need to have a clear record of what's going on. And you need to tell them exactly what you've tried to do and what hasn't worked. They need to know all this stuff. It's really important. Whether or not they do anything, it's up to them. But in the worst case scenario, if you had to quit or you lost your job, and you had to take some action against them, you need some documentation. And three notes on what you just said, because that's really great advice. And I've actually been taking notes myself. They actually hired another person because one other person quit because of the hostile work environment, but they hired somebody else. And she's super sweet. And she's been the better side of the workplace actually defending me and stuff. And she's actually been documenting stuff for me. We even oh, have text awesome. messages in between talking about events. But recently, I was terminated, like, the end of last month. But I have been taking notes of everything, so I, I have that. Good. Okay. That's important. I would just say going forward, there's a lesson here to be learned. I don't think you did the wrong thing because you were trying to be nice. You were trying to be friendly and not have to be confrontational. I get that. That makes a lot of sense. But I would say just going forward, take it more seriously for yourself, for your own sake. If someone's making fun of you for any reason, especially for like medical stuff, things that you don't have control over, absolutely take it more seriously. If they don't get the hint after one friendly reminder, like, hey, that's not okay, be more stern about it. It doesn't mean you're confrontational. It just means you're setting a healthy boundary for yourself. Exactly. And I definitely appreciate that going forward. And I feel like that's definitely going to play into a bigger impact in my work career from now on. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that's upsetting to hear. It's it's very frustrating to hear when that kind of environment's being allowed, especially in HR is not uh, responding in some way. So sorry you had to deal with that. No worries. Thing. I'm, I'm just glad that, you know, better things are coming and, you know, really looking forward towards the future in, in the workplace for me. So I'm yes. glad I am just on found a way out. Onward and upward for sure. All right. Well, thanks, Andrew. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much again. Hey, thanks for tuning into the Peace Building with Dr. Pollock show. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more workplace conflict advice. Share on social media if you think your friends and colleagues would benefit from this episode. And if you have a workplace conflict and want to be a caller on our show for free coaching and advice, please email podcast at pollockpeacebuilding.com. Thanks.